two theta. So we have two du equals d theta. There we go. So d theta comes out, and I get two oh, two du. Now if I change my endpoints around, uh, they were in thetas. Now theta equals two u. So I'm just going to take my endpoints and. Double them? That doesn't seem right. Oh, yeah, you cut them in half. I don't know why I wrote the second one. All right, so when theta is 0, u is 0. When theta is 2 pi, <laughs> just looking right here, when theta is 2 pi, then u will just be pi. All right, so you can, I think your question was basically, can you do it in u's? And the answer is, you can always do it in u's. You don't have to come back to thetas. It's up to you. So I generally teach it where we unsubstitute back, but you can absolutely finish your integral in the different variable. So that's the end of chapter 11. So chapter 11 was basically could be summarized in two-dimensional coordinates that aren't just, we did parameterized in two dimensions and then polars in two dimensions. So it's basically two-dimensional uh, geometry with different coordinate systems. Chapter 12 is three dimensions. And we'll start. So we're going to do a whole lot more geometry before we do any actual calculus. And just looking, I don't even think we do calculus in chapter 12. Nope, we don't do any calculus for a while. So if you're bored with calculus, we'll be doing geometry for a long time. Oh man. Is chapter 12 going to be on the test at all? Nope. Your test will end on chapter in chapter 11, so there'll be no 12 on your test. All right, so I don't think there's any calculus in chapter 12. It's all just geometry. <laughs> yeah, geometry's not easy, so don't get too excited. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to go with, oh, I need some lines or I'll draw crazy. Maybe I'll go with the grid. We're going to be doing some graphs. All right, three-dimensional coordinate systems. We'll start out with Cartesians. So of course, we're going to write things very abbreviated. So we'll write three-dimensional real space as R3. That's R times R times R. And you can regroup or associate. So another way to think of it is r times r squared. So the standard way to draw these axes, your y-axis will now look like it's going to the right. Your x-axis is supposed to be going straight out of your paper. So you cannot obviously draw that. If you drew the x-axis going straight out of your paper, it would look something like that. Because you'd be looking at the end of a line. Actually, it wouldn't look like that. It would look like that. <laughs> you wouldn't see anything. Uh, if you are a skilled artist, you can probably uh, make your arrow look like it's coming out of the paper. but. I didn't do that well in art class. <laughs> I think you draw it skinny in the back part and then thicker as it comes. Oh, there we go. Kind of. Something like that. Vanishing point. All that good stuff. And then up will be the Z.
Yeah, that's it. So as easy to draw the axis. So let's talk about some. We'll do some planes first. So here's the easiest plane to visualize. Z equals zero. How would you describe the plane that corresponds to the equation Z equals zero? R squared. So it will be R squared, but Just the XY. so it's the XY plane. So it's the plane that you can think of it, if Z is the height, it's basically the floor. We talked about the Earth being flat, it's the flat Earth. <laughs> so it's a joke for the rest of the internet, hopefully. <laughs> So you have a height going straight up, and then flat surface, infinitely flat, all directions. Now, of course, it's funny when you think about it like that, because there really is no up. Because we're rotating, so whatever you say up right now, it's going to be slightly different in a couple seconds from now, because we're rotating. So the short answer is there is no up, there is no down. We're all just kind of rotating, flying through space. We just pick a coordinate system and go with it. Well, yeah, but gravity doesn't pull in the same direction either, depending on where you are. <laughs> and as you get closer to the moon or some other gravitational force, um, I think if you're in the right spot between the Earth and the moon, you can probably experience true zero gravity because they'll... We actually solved it in physics. Oh, there we go. So if you're in the right spot, <laughs> you're not being pulled... I don't know. But there's also the sun to consider. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. So everything is relative. There are there's really no no absolute anything. All right. So why is graphing very bad in three dimensions? So you might think, oh, look at that point. It looks like the coordinates would be go in the one in the at y and one in the z. So maybe it would be zero one one. However, that would be assuming that that point is on the YZ plane. There's no reason to think it's actually on the YZ plane. Maybe it's further forward than that. So it could be corresponding to the point go forward one and then really carefully over that much and then up that much. So whatever that whatever this amount is, there could be many different uh, the point could be drawn here, but actually have different coordinates. So you lose the ability to see kind of what, uh, how deep or shallow the point is. So I'm going to avoid as much as I can actually graphing carefully in three dimensions because you have this problem where that point actually could represent an infinite number of points. So we can talk about the three coordinate planes. So there was one coordinate plane. This is also known as the XZ, oh, the XY plane. So that's the floor is one way to think about it. And there's two other coordinate planes. And the other one will be X equals zero. So how would we describe the plane that corresponds to the equation X equals zero? So that's the YZ plane, or you can think of it kind of as the, I don't want to say back wall, because there's things behind it. It's not the back wall, but it's what separates the points with positive X coordinates from points with negative X coordinates. So this is the YZ plane. And then last up, we have the Y equals zero plane. It'll be the ZX, so we'll call it the XZ to keep our alphabetical ordering, is the XZ plane. And I guess I could call that the, what separates the left from the right, just looking at the way that I drew this. So if you're on one side of the Y equals zero plane, you're on the left. If you're on the other side, you're on the right. Now, of course, all that changes if you look at this at a different angle. Right and left, up and down are not terribly relevant in an absolute sense. So we can draw all these planes. And I'll 
do my best sketch over here. If you have graph paper, you can try to make this decent. I'm trying to draw that. I don't think it's going to work. I would need it. They use different colors. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, that work. <laughs> and then we have the Flat plane, I'll use green for the ground. No, we already did the green plane. Oh, now we're just drawing a rectangle. Nice.
x, y, radius 2, 2, 2, 2. Dimensional graph in three dimensions. This is what you would see if you looked down the from above along the z-axis. You would see a circle. So this is the perspective you would have if you looked if you were up high and looked straight down on the circle. So let's try to combine these two together. So I need to draw a circle. So there's two points on the circle with a z coordinate of 2. Now I have to be careful. This is not correct. These are not two other points on the graph. You don't go up and down to. You go along the the x-axis too. So I'm going to draw a copy of the x-axis and I'll draw it super thin. Nope. So along this copy of the x-axis I should be going to both directions. So let's say something like that and like that. You'd have to put markings to make this look nice. And do your best to draw a oval in here. So there's our uh, region. In this case, it's a one-dimensional object. It's just a circle. There are other regions I could be drawing. Let's talk about the region. What if I just took out this x uh, z equals 2 part of this? I'd still have the same top view. It would look like a circle from the top. But what would it actually be? In? It would be an infinitely tall cylinder. So that would turn into a cylinder that goes up and down forever. So the other way to think about our region is the infinite cylinder and then cut by this e equals 2 plane. So there's lots of different ways to think about these. So basically, that, that still is a cylinder, but it's just not infinite. It's just two, two width or two length long. Well, so if I draw out the separately, so what I drew is the intersection of the two equations. If I draw them separately, uh, I'm already using blue for the uh, plane. So I'll just keep going with blue. Uh, the real z equals 2 plane looks, it's a horizontal plane that looks like this, and it's infinitely wide. Then there's also the infinite cylinder. I'll go with purple for that. And it goes forever those directions. And the plane, of course, is infinitely wide. It starts to be a pain to draw these little arrows everywhere. But it's where the infinite plane intersects the infinite cylinder. It does it in that nice circle that we drew right there. So the one dimension is like the outline. What would two dimension be like if the circle was filled? If the cir so if this was an inequality? That would be a filled circle. So a filled, but like, so one dimension is just like an outline, two dimension would be like basically filled in all of it. Like yeah, the best way to think about dimension is if you had to, if you were a point on whatever object you're looking at. So let me get the, all this stuff out of here. So if you were one of these, if you were on this curve, how many directions could you move? Only two. You could say two, but realistically, you can only go one because you can. It, the other direction is negative, the same direction. So you really only have one choice of what direction to go. This is along the line. Is yeah, along doing? the curve. Okay. So it's a one-dimensional object. Uh, same thing. If I was on the blue line. I'd have only one choice. I can go one direction or the exact opposite. Whereas if I fill the plane in, 
or fill the circle in, now a point on here, I have two choices. I could go that along that direction or along the other direction. So there's two choices. Does that answer your question a little better on dimension? So we'll do distance next. Point one, we'll use x1, y1, z1, and point two, we'll get creative and call it x2, y2, z2. So I want to know what's the distance between these two points. So let's talk about the good old days, distance in two dimensions. Anybody remember distance formula? Y2 minus Y1 square root plus. Yeah, so it's Y2 minus Y1 squared. I'm going to go alphabetically though. So that should look familiar. It's the difference of the X's squared plus the difference in the Y squared. You square root, and that's the uh, Pythagorean theorem basically. That's the hypotenuse on a right triangle. All right, so this is two dimensions. What do you think is going to happen in three dimensions? It's going to get a whole lot longer. So basically the exact same thing we do. We just put a plus z2 minus z1. So that's our three-dimensional distance. So distance from P1 to P2 is square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. Now if we were in four dimensions, it should be really obvious what distance would be in four dimensions. Just do the same, play the same game with the fourth coordinate. Just subtract the fourth coordinate squared and add it together. Now just to warn you, if you look at uh, relativity, the last coordinate is time, and it's actually a minus. Not for us, not in Euclidean distances, but in general relativity, I believe your last coordinate would be time, and it's negative. Which is a little crazy. That means you can have two points that are not the same, but are distance zero apart, or points that are a complex distance apart. Don't worry. We don't have to worry about that in math. <laughs> All right, so there's our distance formula. So use distance to describe a sphere. So a sphere is a set of all points that are the same distance, so some R value from the center, which we'll call x0, y0, z0. <coughs> so it's going to be distance from the center to some general point x, y, z will equal r. So that's how to write it out in math notation. The distance from the center to any point will equal r. And we'll write that square root x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared plus z minus z naught squared equals r. And most people don't like square roots, so we'll just square both sides. And it will look just like the circle 
equation. So that's a sphere with center x, y, z, x naught, y naught, z naught, and radius r. find the radius of the sphere. What type of algebra do I have to do to find the radius and center of the sphere? You had this problem with circles before. There was just no z's hanging around. So we're going to complete the square. So let's bring our x's to the front. x squared plus 3x plus y squared. There's no y's, so I'll just write plus 0y plus z squared minus 4z plus 1 equals 0. And I'll do the easy one first. So we have z minus, you take half of the uh, coefficient in front of the z term squared minus that number squared again. That is completing the square. And if you don't remember completing the square, it's right there. So that's complete the square. So I know the z coordinate of the center is 2, the y coordinate of the center is 0, and the x coordinate of the center is almost 1 half, or 1 and a half. It'll be negative 1 and a half but we'll finish this tomorrow.